What happens when a group of friends are convinced that their favourite board game would be a successful game show? But then, just as the show starts to grow its audience, the world shuts down, and they decide to have the host tape the show on the other side of the country from their basement. Well, then what happens? Welcome to 25 Words or Less. You have 45 seconds to get your teammates to guess all five using as few clue words as possible. Patrick Swayze. Dirty Dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is wrong. We're at 17. Oh. oh. 13. Oh. left. Operating doctor. Surgeon. Oh! We would have game nights at our house a lot, and every time we would play 25 words or less, it was just, it was the game that was the most successful. It was the most successful with the most people. It didn't matter ages. It didn't matter if you'd ever played before. It just always was fun. Dan Bukatinsky, who's one of the executive producers, and Lisa Kudra came over and played, and we always played games together, and they loved it. And then my husband one day said to me, we should get the rights to this. He just said, it's just such a good game. Like, in its bones, in its DNA, it is the best game. It was out of print when we found it. We had to buy it on eBay, because, you know, you can't find it. It had won Board Game of the Year in, like, 1996. And then for whatever reason, I don't understand it, it just disappeared. We managed to track down the creator of the game. Bruce Sturton is one of the most brilliant game creators ever. He created a bunch of other award-winning games, and he's just a lovely human being. What we did in the end was write to him and say, look, Bruce, what I'd much rather do is is be a partner with you and develop this game that you created. I mean, that we do this, you'd sell us the rights, as it were, for $25 or less. Yeah, that is true. Michael did make that offer, and I got a good laugh out of it. And from the very first conversation we had, he was just brilliant. And, uh, and that got us going. When Michael shared his concept of the game, I was thrilled that we were on the same page. And his vision and Mary's vision and Lisa and Dan's vision turned out to be exactly what I had always hoped would happen. And so Mary reached out to me to see if I'd produce it with them and Lisa and I. And we partnered up and talked about how we can take the vibe of playing this word game with celebrities, with people in the living room, yelling at each other, having fun, and trying to capture that for TV. But we knew we were going to have to interview a bunch of different hosts to see who would be the perfect unifier. One of my heroes is with us in the studio today. Yes. And, uh, you know her from The View. You know her from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Okay. But now uh, you're going to see her on a hot new game show. It's called 25 Words or Less. I loved it. I like games in general. Games that had to do with words especially interested me. I knew that Mary McCormick was behind it and Lisa Kudrow and Dan Bukatinsky. So it was a great group of people. And it was fun. I, we, were, we were starting a show from the ground up, and by the end of the season, we were all fast friends. And that's because we were creating something together that we were proud of. Candy bar. Snickers. Yeah! It was electric. And it was part of what we always wanted to do with this show. It was like part of what was trying to recreate that party game in the living room vibe. It just always was fun and really rambunctious and heckly. I mean, it was just fun and easy to tease. Forgive and forget. Forgive. Yes! 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 <laughs> Mary. <laughs> She's more competitive than I am. I didn't think it was possible. We were sitting pretty, because we were doing a whole season with tons of fun, lots of laughs, tons of celebrities. And then... <sighs> Developing the 
developing tonight, the World Health Organization declaring the coronavirus a pandemic. Festivals are shutting down, cruise passengers are canceling trips, even the Olympics are coming into question. Multiple talk and late night shows like Ellen DeGeneres and Jimmy Fallon will no longer have live audiences. I'll never forget the phone call. It was a Zoom call with Stephen Brown and all the, um, the key players, I guess, for the show. The pandemic had just hit, and here we are discussing season two, not knowing if there could possibly be a season two. And people were told to get as creative as possible with this show because we could not possibly be on a set the way we were before. We had to distance socially. So how do we do this? The pandemic shut the world down, and the odds were against it, us completely again. We sort of were put to the test to say, like, is the game itself strong enough? Stick around for more Making of a Game Show, 25 Words or Less, right after this. We had our first season and we were in a studio and with couches and the whole thing and it was okay, you know, it's a new show. People are trying to find us and then bam, COVID hit and we had to regroup and come up with a totally new format. We had to learn as television and production professionals how to change our game and how to be able to still produce a product that was watchable and viewable under the constraints of being safe during the COVID pandemic. Call me an optimist. I really wasn't worried about the future of the show. I thought we would continue because it's such a great format and it would have been such a tremendous waste to just say goodbye to it. One of our executives came up with the idea about, hey, what about if we did it in pods? When we were thinking about different ways to, to reconfigure the show for, for the pods, that it might have a Hollywood Squares vibe to it. The one thing we didn't want it to be, you know, was, was this, which is a Zoom call. We were like, that was like massively on our minds. Like, we don't want to make a pandemic game show that is basically on Zoom. And so Manny and I hunkered down and we tried to create a version of the show where everyone was in a pod. To do that, we created singles and split screens and the sort of shots you might otherwise see on a regular show. And we decided to cut it a lot of stuff full so it would feel like a regular television program. So it did not feel to the viewer at any time like, oh, I'm watching a Zoom call. We talked about masking, testing at every single day of shooting. Um, and we were worried about Meredith. We didn't want to put Meredith at risk. And we came up with this plan. I was surprised to say the least when I got the call saying, you know, why don't we just take a look at your basement? Uh, their, their thoughts were, uh, you're safe in New York, and that was the primary concern of the show. Everybody had to be safe. And the next thing I know, they're building a set. It's going to be wild, but we rehearsed it last night, and we worked out a lot of the kinks. We feel so good about it, and we just so wanted to come back for season two and say thank you to all you guys for your support. We hope you keep watching, and we're about to start the real shows. I'll keep you posted. And here's your host, Meredith Vieira. Welcome to 25 Words or Less. If things look a little different, that's because this season is just a little more socially distant for obvious reasons. I'm in New York in my basement. This is it. That is the <laughs> fanciest house arrest I've ever seen. <laughs> So while Meredith is in her uh, finished game show basement in New York, we're here in Los Angeles being well taken care of. So this is my pod right here. I love it because um, all I'm looking at on the screen, if you come around, you can see, keep watching. This is where all the magic happens. Come on. Pants on fire. Uh, liar. Liar. Twins. Uh, 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 triplets. Two, uh, yeah! Yes! Yes! Wow! You know, in its own way, it's far more intimate because you've got these close-ups of everybody, and that's important when you're playing this kind of a game. You're seeing the way their mind works. You're looking at their eyes. You're looking at their mouth. It, it just, to me, felt like a better Lost game. Job. 
we've had the opportunity to go back to the old format and everybody is like, nah, this works. <laughs> We're all in different rooms, but it somehow we are all connected. We still heckle each other. We still have fun with each other. Yeah! You know, when I'm right here in the pod, the thing that's so fun about it is it just focuses right in on the game. The game and the game play, and that's what everybody loves. It seems like every year we've made big paradigm shift changes to the to the show. And the show not only has endured but improved. We went from a single contestant paired with two celebrities to two contestants who know each other very well paired with one celebrity. The minute we started playing with, with teammates who knew each other, a whole other aspect of the gameplay started happening. My best friend, Dan, uh, Dustin, I'm... Julia, Eden. Ooh, very nice. Very I was nice. gonna get Julia. I knew that was your best friend. <laughs> Season three we decided to go to bringing back returning champions. And I love it. I love it because as a viewer, you get invested in these people and you get to see how much money they're bringing. Uh, I think it's a better story. Hello everyone, I'm on my 17th episode on 25 Words or Less. It's the most appearances on, in show history. This past year has been a little rough. It just feels like a turning of events and I am just, I'm just so blessed. We made a decision uh, during COVID that we wanted to honor the people that supported our show. These were people that found us, many of them during COVID and stuck with us. And that's how we built our audience. My very favorite super fan, I asked her how she became a super fan. My mom found you guys accidentally when she was flipping through the TV and couldn't find anything to watch. <laughs> So she put it on, and she and I got very invested into it. This is the next best thing to nothing. That's our new slogan. It's better than nothing. What do you want to us? Give it a shot. It is our show. It speaks to, like, this sort of irreverent, we don't take our ser ourselves seriously. We are better than nothing. Six years into being better than nothing. Wow. Great job, oh. Great job. Put your hands together for Miss Mary. Oh my God. I think the biggest challenge to producing this show is that it is deceptively hard. My casting department for contestants interviews thousands of people. Paul Gordon, who runs the contestant department and has for many, many seasons, um, does a great job briefing them and letting them know all the rules. And then I go in and I, I try to tell them, based on my experience, what I've seen. And one of the things I want to discuss with you guys is I don't want maybes. I don't want maybe if I say this, they might say this. I want for sure. I've had the word uh, liberty on the show, right? Statue of blank, we all know this, right? I don't wanna hear anybody in this room saying, freedom, ability to do what you want. That's not gonna get you to liberty for sure. Statue of liberty. liberty. It's the way to go, Rosie. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> We take the game seriously. We want people to win money. And every single celebrity who comes on wants that, and they, I mean, they, they can't stand to lose because they don't want to lose for their teammates. They are in it, and they bring that energy, and it's infectious. Our audience loves it. And I remember being really wanting to win, did win once, and wanted to come back immediately, immediately. I was like, I want to win every game. Great microwave. I love to win. Uh, I love playing this show. You know, I'll always come back. I have missed you so much, and you two, Matt and Colton, you have been here since season one. You've been here for us. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah day one, 25 words. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that keeps me coming back, truly, is Meredith. It's so much fun to work with her. It makes it easy to say yes when they ask me to come back. <laughs>
you know, Meredith was the only person who wasn't with us in the studio for three years because of COVID. And finally, in 2023, when COVID really opened up, she came out to the studio. <laughs> Meredith is part of the fabric of American cultural life. Meredith Vieira is one of the best interviewers in America. She's just funny. There's soundbite after soundbite after soundbite about the way she likes to rib everybody. <laughs> we plan our season. We go right to the last show and, go, and say, get Greg and Melissa. Aww. Because we can't get anyone else. It's just really true. hard Everyone to get people available. to come on this show. That is it. And they, they're sitting. always available. <laughs> I truly believe that getting to do 25 words or less really opened the doors for me to get to do person, place, or thing. So thank you, Meredith, because guess what? I got my own show. Oh, God, speaking of, you know what? I have to go do my show. Um, I'm coming! There's nothing like being here. The energy's different. I get to see you all, which makes a big difference. <laughs> she's cunningly funny and sort of naughty, and so she's just a great personality. Like, you want to have a drink with us. Do you like wine, ladies? Wine. Yeah, well, me too. I'm coming with you. <laughs> I think the success of the game is the game and Meredith and Jamie. <laughs> Today on 25 Words or Less, she's six foot two, a pure game playing genius. Just kidding, that's not her real height, and she's terrible. It's Raven Simone. She's here while she waits for her Beanie Baby collection to bounce back to their mid-90s highs. It's Amber Stevens West! It was brilliant to have him because he is such a character and he's so irreverent. He sets the tone for that show. I'm not saying she's my favorite celebrity that we have on the show, but she is the only one who's getting a hug from me. It's Melissa Peterman! <laughs> I usually, I come up with all my intros the night before, because I have to get here in the morning and I run them past all the celebrities. I say I run them past everyone, but there's a few celebrities who just say, you can say whatever you like, just surprise me with it at this point. He's so good at producing. We are constantly trying to come up with clever little things to do. And then between announcing and gameplay, I'm running back to my desk where I do judging. My favorite part of the show is the gameplay. It's hard to look away from. You get caught up in it. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes a word will go by and go like, oh, that's terrible, they shouldn't have said that. And then I go, oh wait, yeah, that's my job. I have to press the button for that. You know, this is a tricky show to, to judge. My judges, I like to say, are hooked on phonics. They are listening, they care about the phonics. Did they get them to actually say what that word sounds like? Horse passenger. Uh, rider. rider, jockey. I think we made the right choice with horse passengers. Yes, yeah, good that's job, good job. There are different pronunciations of the word. If you look at the fifth word over here, we want to make sure that our judges will accept either pronunciation, sewer or sewer. So I just like to make sure we're all on the same page. To watch Manny and Michael work out what is the rhythm of the show. There's no such thing as a wide shot because we don't have a studio in the same way. So how do you create that sense? So let's get started, ladies Walk and Jaleel, Ready effect. Up. All right. Take a look and at effect your list. Go. You have 45 mm. seconds to get your teammates to guess all five using... We tried to uh, transition the show from the studio show, where Meredith is in the center, and we have two couches on both sides. We sort of recreate that in a uh, sort of virtual way, where the three boxes on the right represent that couch, and the one on the left represent the couch on the left and Meredith in the center. In the original show, the contestants would walk up to Meredith to do bidding. So we tried to recreate that by doing an effect that affects them onto Meredith into a three shot, and then we affect out onto the gameplay. This has worked really, really well. I spent three years, I guess, in my basement. Three years of boxed wine in my basement. Then I came back to LA, and now we're in Atlanta, which is a whole new adventure, and we're loving it. <laughs> Stick around for more Making of a Game Show, 25 words or less, right after this.
looking back now on those moments where we would stare at that old, e the old eBay version of the board game and wonder if this would ever make its way to television. It went from being a very physical, you know, on stage game show where we're running around and hitting each other and high-fiving and we had to sort of create a new way to do the show. And against the odds, you know, we found a way to recreate the game so that it could last. And, you know, these odds just never really seemed to play. You know, we just kept doing what we loved. And focus on what's important, and that's the game. I think more and more people are discovering our show. I think there are more and more places now for people to find us. Each and every day we're producing these shows and we're having a blast backstage. Our celebrities are having a blast backstage. Meredith is having fun. So much of the time we're just like, oh, that was great. I wish somebody was there to watch it. And now someone is. Do you want to go behind the scenes with our celebrity guests and me? Or maybe you want a chance to win a fantastic prize of your own? Well, you know that you do. So before each break, use your smartphone camera. You scan the QR code in the corner right there of your screen, and you're going to have access to all of that bonus content. Enjoy. Scan yeah, it. yeah. Scan, scan it. That's right it. There. That's it. Shows are always better when I think when you're there as a group. I mean, we did what we had to do because of COVID and kept our show alive. In many ways, I get the same feeling hosting these games. I always say to my husband when I come home, well, I did no harm today. I gave people some money. I brought a smile to someone's face. I entertained. And that, to me, is what the game is all about.